Reddit. What's your favorite no freaking way story? My sister was driving down the street at 45 miles per hour with her windows open and a deer ran into the street. Instead of hitting this deer, the deer jumped into her car through the window, landed with its head in the foot part of the passenger side seat, and its butt on the headrest. The deer was freaked the duck out, and with its butt in the air, proceeded to shit all over the car. She obviously pulled over several people stopped to help, and asked her where the deer was. She just stood there screaming. It's in the car. It's in the car. A helpful man opened the door, pulled the deer out, and the deer bounded off like nothing happened. For imagery, she was driving a late 90s Ford Escort at the time. No one believes this story, but it is 100% true. My roommate had a huge fish tank with four cichlids in it. One of them the pink one was really ducking mean, and used to pick on the other ones. I hated him. One night, I had a dream, that I caught him with a net, threw him in a pan with some butter, fried him up, and ate him. The next morning I walked by the fish tank, looked in to discover, that the pink one was gone. I freaked out, and looked all over the tank for him. He's nowhere to be found. When my roommate got home from work, I told him about my dream and that the pink cichlid is missing. He looked at me, visibly shaken and said, Dude, I'm gonna start locking my bedroom door at night. Days and weeks go by, I'm truly disturbed, that I'm capable of sleep eating my roommate's pets. Finally, I'm so overcome with anxiety, that I decide to scour the tank, CSI style, looking for clues. I pressed my face against every square inch of the tank. Desperate to salvage a shred of sanity, after what must have been at least an hour, something tiny catches my eye under a large piece of coral in the back corner. I reached in and pulled out the coral, only to discover the bones of the pink cichlid. It had been wedged between the rocks and the coral on the bottom of the tank. Somehow the other three cichlids had murdered the pink one and telepathically framed me for it. Not only did they frame me, they got me to confess. One winter, I went sledding down a popular hill in my hometown with my brother and his wife. At the bottom of the hill, there's a frozen pond. My sister-in-law hopped on the back of my sled, sitting backwards, and we went down together. Due to the extra mass, we started going way faster than I'd expected. When I noticed we were heading right toward a little kid, I just couldn't maneuver out of the way. So I leaned forward and scooped the kid up, holding him up like Zimba. Then I realized we were still about to sled into a frozen pond. So I bailed out and held the kid as high over my head as I could. I stood up, set the kid down, and looked around for his parents. When I saw a big dude coming at me, I was like oh shit here we go. Then he got closer and I realized it was of my closest friends. And that the kid I ran into was his son who I babysit regularly. I thought to myself, no freaking way and gave him a big hug. The kid said he thought it was awesome. When I was 17, I worked for a excavation demolition company for the summer. We were gutting an old mill in New Hampshire to turn into high-end lofts. One of the workers was standing on the top of some scaffold about 12, 15 feet up using a handheld bandsaw to cut through a large pipe. As he was cutting, a strap supporting the pipe broke letting it drop down and pinch the blade. This made the saw shoot back towards him and push him off the scaffold. This guy did a complete ducking backflip while holding a working saw from over 10 feet up. He landed on his feet. Saw still running. Everyone stopped and stared at him for about 5 seconds before we went back to work. Too long didn't read I worked with a redneck Jackie Chan in New Hampshire who does backflips with power tools. So I'm spending the summer on Nantucket. Friends of mine introduced me to a guy named Robbie. He and I hit it off. It's like instant bro love. We spend days kicking it, smoking bowls and philosophizing. Then he leaves, and we lose touch. Years go by. I'm on a subway in New York. This guy I sorta of recognize is on the same car. He comes over and say hi, but it's my stop, and so I get off. The instant the doors close, I remember who he is. It's Robbie. Shit. The subway pulls away and he's gone. Years go by. I'm living in LA and it's my friend Leslie's birthday at some club down on Pico. We pull up to the front door. I hop out, and a guy smoking a cigarette outside says hey, 
you. It's Godam Robbie. We are best friends ever since, and he was best man at my wedding. My friend, John, is a paramedic and firefighter. He also teaches and certifies first aid CPR. Now, for those that don't know, CPR is not very effective. It has a very low success rate, unless initiated soon after an incident which is why everyone should learn CPR. Even after revival, many people have serious health effects. One day, John gets into a pretty bad car accident and goes into cardiac arrest. The paramedics and police are dispatched. The officer first on scene knows CPR and initiates chest compression on John. John is revived and although suffered severe memory loss, is well. The kicker, John taught the officer CPR the week prior to the incident. I was at a car show, and I was raising my hand, so my parents could see I was still next to the old Cadillac Batmobile. Next thing I know someone has high fived me, I look over, and it was Adam West. He winked, smiled, and walked away to do more signings or something. It was glorious. A friend of an old roommate of mine was at the airport a few years ago, and saw Bill Nye the ducking science guy at the terminal next to his. Eventually, he got up the courage to talk to him, but it was nothing more than small chat and praise. Bill's plane gets called, so the kid leaves him be, and sits back down trying to digest how cool his life just became, but a few minutes go by and all of a sudden he hears his name called. Bill Nye is standing at the gate and calls out hey kid. Science rules then boards the plane. Here's mine. I was walking my older dog one night around 10pm. I had him off leash, since it was late, and we were in a neighborhood no one to bother. I kept track of him for poo duty as he sniffed around, and we were approaching an intersection. The house we were walking along was 20 feet from the sidewalk, where I was and was at by very large juniper bushes which he was checking out. Suddenly he stopped, and dove into a bush. This was odd considering he was nearing 10 years old, and although he's active, he's not crazy like that note lab husky mutt for reference. Out of the bush, come some sort of snarl scream and all I could think was shit. He got a raccoon. And out leaps a immature mountain lion at least 20% larger than my dog. It runs off down the road. And I stand there, terrified, yelling no duck I'm way as he comes back to me wagging ass, like he's the greatest dog ever. Which is very likely considering that cat was much bigger than me. It was probably his most well earned draw hide bone he's ever earned. I was deployed in Iraq and was out on a convoy on deck. 31, 2007 long story short, I unknowingly pissed on an IED, which exploded 30 seconds after I walked away. This was on my birthday. Too long didn't read trudge trudge, piss trudge trudge boom. Do you have magic piss that delayed the explosion? Or are you just one of the luckiest people alive? So a good friend of mine is in an airport in Canada in a bookshop waiting to get the flight back to the UK with his family about 7, 8 at the time anyway across the bookshop. Is Ian McKellen Gandalf and my friend and his brother really loved Lord of the Rings at the time. They go over to him, and he looks over, realizes that they have recognized him. And right then and there does an impromptu rendition of the Bridge of Khazad-dum scene complete with You Shall Not Pass. Right in the middle of a crowded airport. He then gives them autographs house that for no ducking way. My girlfriend and I were traveling in Italy and met this nice Australian girl on the train from Rome to Naples. We chatted a bit and learned that she had just left her friend in North Africa to start traveling on her own. Fast forward 2 weeks and my girlfriend and I are now on a bus from Bratov, Romania to Bucharest, and we ended up randomly meeting the Australian girl's friend that was left in North Africa. My brother's friends are twins, and are friends with the Bush twins. Makes for a cute photo OP. Well, about 7 years ago they were invited to their birthday party at the White House. It was a gag gift party, as they are going through the metal detectors. The secret service inspect the box with the presents. Pull out two giant black dildos. They stare down my brother's friends, before proceeding to burst out laughing. I still can't ducking, believe they went through with it. The truly giant balls. I've already told this one, but here it is again. 
my former English teacher went camping with his friends. They were riding on a bus, and he decides to take a nap. When he woke up, there was a coke can floating in the air. So he reaches out to grab it, and when he comes to a little bit his friends are freaking the duck out. Why? Because his friend dropped his soda can, and my English teacher woke up and caught it. Flying 1100 miles for an interview. I hear someone across the aisle yell my name. I'm thinking. That voice sounds familiar. Turns out it was one of my good friends from college. I'm thinking no freaking way. He got an interview the same time I did. And we stayed next door at the same hotel the night before the interview. And now we are housemates. Both got the job. The end. Once. Waiting in line at a restaurant. I see the guy in front of me. I think I recognize him. But I don't know what from. The entire time I'm waiting. I'm searching in my brain as to why I knew him. He turns to me and says. Do I know you? We both stood there for a good 10 minutes. Going through high schools. Workplaces. Friends. Etc. Anything to find out why we knew each other. As far as we could tell. Though. There is no reason at all we should have ever met before. But we both clearly recognized each other. To this day. No clue. A while ago. My dad and I had a driver pick us up from San Francisco airport to drive us home. Since there was a lot of traffic. We had a bunch of time to talk and shoot the shit. Turned out that the driver's daughter was the fiancé of my dad's nephew my cousin. Who both live in Cleveland. We attended the wedding a few months later and again reconnected with the driver while there. We started talking some more. And then he introduced us to his wife. Apparently, her and my dad went to the same high school. Graduated the same year. And even dated for a few months. This was in a very small suburban town outside of Cleveland. Small world. Indeed. The day after I proposed to my wife we were at the science fiction museum in Seattle. Wow. There is an exhibit. That is a giant tumbler full of yellow beads. Like thousands of yellow beads. And one black one. It is meant to illustrate the unlikelihood of finding life in the universe. I called her over to tell her how cool it was. And she just points at it casually and says. There's the black one. And she has continued to amaze me every day since. Good times. What an elegant metaphor. I've got two. But I'll leave the other four later. First. When I was 16. My mom took me to New York City for my birthday. We left on a Wednesday and were flying back Saturday afternoon so I could go to school on Monday and my mom could watch my baby sister while my stepdad went back to work. On Saturday, we get on the plane. It rolls out of the tarmac. And we sit there for approximately 4 hours without moving and without an explanation. The plane then took us back to the gate and said they had some protocol that prevented them from keeping us on the tarmac any longer. And the flight was cancelled. Ate well. My mom and I were freaked out. To say the least. As it was pretty imperative that we get home as soon as possible. My poor stepdad is not very self-reliant. All the passengers rushed off the plane and got in a line to figure out alternatives. And my mom and I start bitching about our situation. We mention my baby sister, who has Down syndrome, and the lady behind us in line butts in, and says she has a brother with mental retardation as well. This leads to us chatting in line, and talking about what bullshit that airline was. After a while, the woman who was with two friends and her niece nonchalantly mentions that she has a private jet, and was only flying home on that airline, to use up frequent flyer miles. She says that she sympathizes with our situation. And how would we like to fly home on her private jet early the next morning? My mom and I could not even believe. The lady proceeds to pay for us to stay in a nice hotel that night. Takes us out to dinner and buys us steaks. And flies us home on her private jet the next morning. And that is one of the best things that has ever happened to me. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more of Reddit Universe.